Let's find the effective seismic weight of this four-story structure. Here we have the top view of the building and the side view. This building is a four-story library. This means we'll have to take into account all of the different loads inside the building and on the roof. The first thing we'll have to do is find the weight of the 8-inch reinforced concrete floor. We could look up the density for reinforced concrete in the steel construction manual, and the density is 150 pounds per cubic foot. Since our slab is only 8 inches thick, we could times 8 inches by 1 over 12. We could then multiply it by the density and cancel out the units we don't need. And now we have the weight per square foot, which is 100 pounds per square foot. Now we can find the total weight of all the concrete slabs or floors combined. For this building, we have three concrete slabs that we need to consider. Now we can find the area of each concrete slab. We know that each bay is 30 feet, so we could find the total area by adding the number of bays and multiplying length by width. 150 times 120 is 18,000 square feet. So now we can find the total weight of all of the concrete slabs by multiplying 100 times 18,000 by 3 we get 5,400 kips for the concrete slabs. Now let's look at the objects that are inside of the building. We have the partitions, and we have the bookshelves, which are considered a live load. Let's look at the bookshelves first. The bookshelves are 150 pounds per square foot. The bookshelves are considered to be a live load. So we'll take 25% of 150 pounds per square foot, and that gives us 37.5. We'll multiply this by 18,000 square feet, the square footage of each floor, and times 3, the number of floors. This gives us 2,025 kips for the bookshelves. Now let's consider the weight of the partitions. In this case, the partitions are 8 pounds per square foot. In ASCE 7-16, we know that we only need to include the partition weight if the partition weight is greater than 10 pounds per square foot. Next, we need to find the exterior weight of all the building's walls. We can lump the weight of the exterior wall to each individual floor by finding half the distance above the floor and half of the distance below the floor. For the roof, it'll only be half of the story height plus the parapet. The weight of the exterior wall is given at 20 pounds per square foot. We'll multiply the height of the exterior wall at each level times the perimeter of the building. The perimeter of this building is 540. Now we multiply that by the height of each level times the density of the exterior wall. This gives us 162 kips for the concentrated weight of the exterior wall at each level. For the roof and the parapet, we have 540 times half of the story height plus 4 feet, the height of the parapet, times the density of the exterior wall, and that gives us 124.2 kips. The total exterior wall weight equals the concentrated weight of the walls at each level, three levels, plus the weight of the walls on the roof and the parapet weight, which gives us 610.2 kips. The last thing we have to consider is the snow load and the weight of the equipment on the roof. For the snow load, we'll take 20% of the weight of the snow. We'll multiply that by the square footage of the roof, 18,000 square feet, which is 126 kips. The weight of the equipment on the roof is just added to the total weight. Now all we have to do is add everything together and we get 8,166.2 kips. Let's review some of the specifics. We find 25% of the live load unless it adds less than 5% of the total seismic weight. We look at partition walls if it's greater than 10 PSF. We look at the operating weight of equipment. We find 20% of the snow load for flat roofs greater than 30 PSF, and we include the weight of roof gardens and equipment. And there you have it, that's an example for how you find the seismic weight of a building using ASCE 7-16.